Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to look at one more example of sketching the graph of a multivariable function. Getting good at this requires lots of practice so I'd like to do lots of examples with you. Here we're looking at the function fxy equals x squared plus y. Well just like before we're going to be looking at the level curves by setting fxy equal to k. If we do that here we get x squared plus y equals k. By rearranging this equation, I can write y as a function of x. I have y equals minus x squared plus k. Ah, just like before, we're getting the equation of a parabola, but this time it's downward opening, right? When k is 0, for example, I get the parabola y equals minus x squared. Looks something like this. Here's k equals 0. When k is 1, the parabola is going to shift up by one unit. So I have uh, y equals minus x squared plus 1, and that's when we're at a height of k equals 1. Uh, similarly, when k is minus 1, the parabola shifts down. y equals minus x squared minus 1. Ah, okay, I think I get the idea here. So I'm going to go ahead and use this contour plot, raise my level curves up, and build my exoskeleton. When k is 0, I'm going to get a parabola pointing in the negative y direction, something like this. And when k is 1, I get a slightly higher parabola pointing in the same direction, something like this. When k is minus 1, it instead moves down. And I guess I could fill in a few more. Ooh, but I'm not really seeing the graph of my function. To me, this just looks like a bit of a jumbled mess. And you know what, folks? Sometimes this will happen. So what do we do? Do we just leave it like this? Well, no, if you can't see the 3D shape, why don't you try looking at some of the other tracings? Some of the other cross sections might help you to better visualize this graph. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Okay, so we tried graphing our function using the level curves obtained by setting z equal to k. And it just became a little bit too messy. Maybe some of you were able to see the shape, but I found it pretty difficult. So now we're gonna look at the other traces. First, I'm gonna look at the trace by setting y equals to k. If I set y equals k, my equation is z is x squared plus k. Oh, I bet you're getting tired of seeing parabolas, right? But sure enough, we have a parabola in the xz plane, right? z is x squared plus a constant. So when k is zero, we have the parabola z equals x squared. When k is 1, that parabola moves up. When k is minus 1, that parabola moves down. So we have these upward opening parabolas in the xz plane. What about when we set x equal to k? This is what we get by slicing it in the x-axis. My equation is z equals y plus k squared. Ugh, another parabola? Well, not so fast. Remember, k is constant. Here we have z equals y plus a constant. That's the equation of a line, not a parabola. So for example, when k is 0, we get the line z equals y. Looks something like this. When we increase k to 1, or we decrease k to negative 1, that line is going to shift up by one unit, since k is squared. So we get the line z equals y plus 1. Similarly, if we were to change k to plus or minus 2, that line is going to shift up by 4 units. So I get the line z equals y plus 4. Okay, we found our vertical traces. Hopefully these cross sections will be a little bit more helpful for visualizing the 3D shape of our graph. Okay, let's pick one of our vertical traces to build the frame for our 3D graph. Now you might think that the lines are the best way to go here. After all, they're much simpler than the parabolas. However, the lines might be a little bit deceptive here. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and build my frame using these parabolas that I get by slicing in the y-axis. And in the final graph of the function, I'll show you where these lines can be found. Alright, so I'm going to plot these different traces or cross-sections along the y-axis. When y is 0, I get the parabola that you see here, that just touches the origin. So that's this parabola here. When k increases, when we move along the direction of the positive y-axis, well, my parabolas are going to be shifting up. 
So I'm gonna have another parabola up here and another parabola up here. When I move in the direction of the negative y-axis, my parabolas are gonna shift down, right? These are my negative k values. So I'm gonna get a parabola here, I'm gonna get a parabola here, and you can fill in more if you need to, but I think I can start to see the graph of my function. Uh, it looks sort of like a slightly rolled up newspaper, right? Uh, it's open at the top, but it forms this sort of parabolic sheet as we move along the y-axis. I'm actually gonna shade it a little bit here so you can see the inside versus the outside of our graph. Now on the next slide, I have a maple generated version of this image. There, I'll be able to show you not only the vertical traces in the y-axis, but also the vertical traces in the x-axis and those pesky horizontal traces, the level curves that mucked up our picture at the beginning. Okay, as promised, here's the maple generated version of our graph. You can see in the first picture that if I slice this graph at points along the y-axis, well, sure enough, I'm getting those same parabolas that we used to graph the function on the last slide. If instead I slice this in the x-axis, well then, ooh, now you can see those vertical lines that we got from our other cross sections. Very neat. Finally, what about those level curves from the beginning of our video? Well, I think it's a little bit easier to see them if you look at this graph from the top down. So take a look at the second picture here. If I slice this at a particular height, say z equals one here, well, sure enough, we're getting those parabolic level curves that we had at the beginning. So they are present, but personally, I find them to be a little less helpful for sketching the 3D graph than the vertical traces in the y-axis. The moral here is that when sketching the graph of a 3D function, you should use whatever level curve or vertical trace you find the most useful.